The Alexander Gazette is one of the nation's oldest newspapers, and it's still hanging on, despite the downfall in the nation's newspaper industry over the last few years. Take a walk with us through the highs and lows of this beloved publication that seems to hang on through thick and thin. So the Alexandria Gazette is one of the oldest newspapers in America. It was originally founded in 1784, um, which is part of a post-war building boom here in Alexandria. Right after the Revolutionary War, there were taverns that were built. This newspaper was established. A lot of things were built around that time. And it changed hands uh, a number of times in the late 1700s. And then early uh, in the year 1800, the Snowden family got a hold of the newspaper and held it all the way to 1911. So the Snowden family actually owned and operated the newspaper from 1800 to 1911. And many of those Snowdens were actually really significant in the community. Edgar Snowden, for example, was not only the publisher and editor of the Alexandria Gazette, he was also simultaneously a member of city council, a mayor of Alexandria, and a member of the House of Delegates. This is in the 1830s and 1840s when there were lots of newspaper editors who were elected officials. It was not a strange thing at that time. It, it, it is today, but back in the 1830s, 1840s, it was not uncommon for newspaper publishers, newspaper editors to be elected officials as well. So Hi, I started uh, working with the Alexandria Gazette in 1981, which was 41 years ago, when it was a daily newspaper owned by a Hong Kong corporation called Sintel. And it was a struggling afternoon daily that was, uh, I guess it was kind of the beginning of the uh, demise, decline of the newspaper industry as a monopolistic business. And I stayed with it because I cared a lot about community journalism and knew how important it was that newspapers were helpful to defining the community and being a reflection of the community. And uh, <clears throat> I stay with it and she, the owner of Sintel, did not want to close the newspaper <clears throat> and, and the buyer, <clears throat> a couple of buyers formed a partnership and they created a company called DCI Publishing, which involved the Connection Newspapers, which is the company that we now publish under. What we've seen since then is the continued uh, change in the newspaper industry. And I think now people recognize that the newspaper industry is uh, a very vital component of the community. In fact, they consider it so much a vital component of the community that now uh, a lot of the revenue from keeping newspapers going, community newspapers going, comes from donation. And they, we're among those people who benefit from donations. For generally, local media in Northern Virginia, I think, you know, they work very hard and I think they have relationships in the community that larger papers and media outlets don't. And I think that is the success of weekly newspapers and uh, weekly digital news media, is, or daily digital news media for that matter, since they're updating every day, is they have those, they've developed those sources, those contacts. They know who to go to. They know how to cover the news in an efficient and thorough way that other media outlets don't, like maybe broadcast or even radios. I started reporting for the Alexandria Gazette Packet in 2005, and I was a full-time employee for many years, all the way up to 2014, when I left to do public radio, but I continued to write for the Alexandria Gazette Packet and still write for the paper. Um, when I started, the newspaper headquarters was out in Tyson's Corner uh, in McLean, and um, had a much larger staff than it does now. Um, the financial crisis of 2008-2009 uh, kind of did a number on the paper and so we had to move out of that building 
to where we are right now, which is on Upper King Street, sort of near the King Street Metro Station. Um, and you know, we moved all of our archive newspapers to this wall that you see behind me, um, which has newspapers dating all the way back to the early days of the newspaper. I worked for The Connection uh, for full-time for a few years, and, and then now I'm a freelance, and I've been freelancing ever since. When I first started uh, was about the year 2000, and we were inside the Beltway out at Tyson's, and then we moved to an office outside the Beltway, and at that time we had a lot of reporters, and everybody had their own beat. But uh, as, as people quit, they wouldn't rehire them, and then you had to get two beats. I mean, I remember I had uh, Springfield and Burke and Fairfax and real estate, so that was a big beat. But, uh, you know, they, your paychecks came uh, pretty consistently, but it was funny. They passed around this little, um, this little sheet, and you signed for when you could get your paycheck, which I thought, at first I thought that was kind of odd, but, you know, you got used to it. But it was a great place, and a lot of people went on after that to, to uh, reporting jobs. We had one guy that went on to ESPN, and he's still there. So, uh, you know, it was a great place to start and a great place to learn. And as far as money, I mean, they just kind of did what they could. Uh, you know, as advertising went down, I left there full-time in about 2004 or 2005, and then I've been freelancing uh, for a while. So, uh, you know, it's a great place to keep your foot in the door and stay on top of local news. That's important. Local news is important to the people that live in this area. The advertising, uh avenue of developing revenue for newspaper industry uh, <coughs> sort of peaked in about 2005 and since then it's consistently declined as advertisers look to ways to uh, use their uh, marketing budgets to reach people over the internet because it was low cost, lower cost, and there were so many suppliers. Consequently, the the newspaper industry, which prior to that period had been sort of a mono, uh, monopoly position, no longer had a monopoly position. And as a result, the, uh, newspaper advertising totally changed and the <coughs> overhead elements of newspapers had to be reduced and that became primarily from the editorial side because uh, it was just insufficient revenue to con continue that business model, and it continues to this day. According to Penny Abernathy, a professor at University of North Carolina's Hussman School of Journalism and Media, about 1,800 newspapers have closed in the United States since 2004, and 1,700 of these are weeklies. The pace of closures up until now has been about 100 a year, said Abernathy. So there's always this tension in the newspaper world about putting your news online for free for anybody to read. And so there remains a hard copy newspaper. Even today, you can get an actual printed paper copy of the Alexandria Gazette packet, which is frankly how I like to read the newspaper, is the actual hard copy newspaper. And you know, our stories are uploaded for people to read online and, you know, obviously that's the, the way of the world. Um, but there is something about an actual hard copy newspaper, having it in your hand, being able to flip through the pages and see, you know, kind of the, the display and the interplay between the advertisements and the news. Um, you know, obviously, as time goes on, fewer and fewer people are interested in reading a hard copy newspaper. One of the things that's peculiar about Alexandria is that the, it actually has probably uh, a disproportionate number of people who still like to read hard copy newspapers. And so our local community here in Alexandria is, uh, you know, has more 
people who are interested in getting their hands on a hard copy newspaper than reading something online. Um, for now, that's obviously won't go on forever. Um, but uh, the, that tension between having your news for free and having the hard copy newspaper, you know, has been around ever since I've been in the industry and has sort of whittled away at the financial viability of the industry. If you think about, you know, before the, all the news went online, uh, classified advertising was a huge revenue source for the newspaper. That's gone. Um, you know, advertising was a huge source of revenue for the newspaper. That's not totally gone, but it's, you know, it's a f small fraction of what it used to be. I think they're doing a lot of things with uh, digital offerings and services. Um, a lot of the newspapers, um, well, in Northern Virginia and elsewhere, are putting a lot more emphasis on their uh, websites, uh, on digital newsletters, on uh, podcasts, and, you know, we have a lot of weeklies in Northern Virginia and they are updating their news on their website every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. So that allows them to be more than just a weekly newspaper. And so they're taking advantage of the technology to make the news as current as it possibly can be for their, their readers and the people in their communities. I am a newspaper reader. I read uh, two to three newspapers a day, um, and of course the Gazette is not daily, so I don't include the Gazette in the daily newspapers. But um, newspapers are incredibly important to democracy and for people to understand what's going on in their communities. Um, I think uh, most newspaper journalism, including the Gazette, are by far more independent and unbiased than the vast majority of online content. Uh, and one of the uh, reflections of the change in the industry is this newspaper, for instance, operated uh, uh, out of a out of a brick built three story brick building with a press, and today it operates out of a townhouse in Old Town, Alexandria, which is a complex uh, slated for redevelopment uh, soon. And I think the point to take there is the large pieces of real estate that these newspapers occupied generally doesn't exist anywhere anymore because there was an enterprise that couldn't afford that kind of space and so like the industry itself shrinking into a, a smaller capacity the real estate position is also developed that way. Local papers are essential to frankly community period I've lived in this community for more than 33 years, and the Gazette specifically has been a key part of my life, uh, not only because it gave me background on my neighbors and what was going on, but especially when I first moved here, I had no sense of what Mount Vernon was as a community. And, and having the opportunity to kind of turn the pages on a, on a weekly basis and, and see what uh, key people were doing, whether it's the supervisor or school board people or what um, the United Community or Good Shepherd Housing or some of our many, many not-for-profits uh, were doing in terms of supporting and, and making a difference on a community. But beyond that, it's, it's about the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts and the swim clubs and it's the, the people who just took a trip and came back and wanted to explain or share some of the pictures that they took about the world uh, beyond even the Mount Vernon community. Our newspapers and frankly local media in general is, is extremely challenged. Um, how do we help those, those uh, papers and continue to, to succeed or at least to, to be here? I think it's going to take a different model and that model is first and foremost for us to decide it truly is essential in our community. We will contribute to that model, whether it's in advertising or, or subscriptions or just donations, because we lose so much when we don't have that local focus, that local attention on 
our neighbors, ourselves, and our immediate community. Oh, I think it has so many um, important local news events uh, for the community. It covers uh, local politics. Uh, it has uh, new restaurants, community news. You learn a little bit about the leaders in your community. So I started reading the Gazette uh, a little more than 20 years ago when I moved to Old Town uh, and delivered free to my front door. Um, I have read it pretty consistently over that period of time, mostly about what's going on locally and, and uh, you know what's happening with city government, those kinds of things. I have served um, most recently on one of the city boards, the Traffic and Parking Board, and so I've been very interested in the coverage that the Gazette 